This video will show you the basics of collecting and analyzing data using the Vernier LabQuest 2 system. To start off with on the home screen, you can see all the apps that are built into each LabQuest 2. There's a periodic table app that does what you expect it to. Under the accessories folder, there's a sound recorder, a calculator, and a stopwatch should you need them. And lastly, under the systems folder, there is a recalibrate option if the screen is not responding properly. The main app you'll be using is, in the top left, the LabQuest app. Within the LabQuest app, there are five main tabs located along the top. Each one of these tabs will have a file menu, which has your standard options to start a new session, open previous data, save your current data, along with other various options to export the data that you collect out of the LabQuest. The first main screen is the sensor option. So if we plug in the pH sensor, you'll see that it automatically detects what kind of sensor we're using and starts giving you a reading instantaneously. However, if some of the older sensors do not automatically detect, under the sensors menu, sensor setup will give you the option to manually select what kind of sensor you plugged in, as well as the option to turn on any of the built-in sensors that each LabQuest has. Under the sensors menu as well, there's also a data collection option, and this is where you will change all the parameters of your data collection, such as the type, how often you collect samples, as well as how long it happens, and this is the one that you will be changing most often. You can also access that option by tapping anywhere in the box to the right. Should your sensor need calibrating, that is also located under the sensor menu down here to calibrate, and the type of calibration that you would perform would vary based on the sensor that you have plugged in. The next tab is the graph tab. There are two ways to get there. You can either select the icon in the top, or if you press the start button in the bottom left hand corner to start collecting data, the app automatically transitions to this tab. As you can see, the graph is live updating with the data from the sensor. This one was set for 120 seconds, but if you don't want it to run for that long, you can press the stop button to end data collection. The graph will usually auto zoom to any relevant data that was collected. If you press start again to start collecting data, it would overwrite whatever you collected unless you click on the file cabinet, which creates a second run. You can then transition between the runs by selecting them or view all of your data collected. To show you some of the other features in the graphing tab, I've loaded previously recorded EKG data. So the first step, you can add statistics, which is located under the analyze option statistics. If you had multiple runs, they would all show up. You select which ones you want to add the statistics to, and then the values appear on the right-hand side. To remove them, it's the same option and just unchecking. You can also select a curve fit for your data, including linear, quadratic, and various other options. So let's try linear with this one just so you can see what it looks like. For both the curve fit and the statistics options, if you press and drag, you'll see that you've highlighted a small selection, and then the statistics or fit will only apply to those sections. In addition, just tapping around the graph, you can see that the value changes based on where in the graph you've selected. You can also zoom. You can either auto zoom based on what the LabQuest thinks you'd want to see, or if you make a selection, you can zoom in to just the part that you are actually interested in. And zooming out lets you see the whole graphic. The out. next tab will give you all of your data in a table form. It shows you each one of your runs and each point of data collected. If you tap on the name, you can change it to something more specific other than just run one or run two. If you had a point in your graph that didn't match the others, you can select it in the table go to the table menu and select strike through data. This leaves it in the table so you have to explain it in your report, but it removes it from the graph. This could possibly give you a better curve fit. And you can also restore the data through the same menu. The final two tabs, this one is the lab viewer. If the lab that you're working with is loaded into the lab quest, you can see a digital version. And the final tab is the notes tab where you can manually enter in any notes about what experiment you're performing. Now under the file menu, if you want to save your data you have a few options. The tabs along here show you where you're saving it. 
This one is saving it directly to the LabQuest 2 since I have a flash drive plugged in. You can also select to save to a flash drive or a micro SD card. You're also able to email your information to either you or your entire lab group. You can save the file, which will op be opened in Logger Light on your computer. You can save just an image of the graph, a text file which can be imported into Excel, or a screenshot of the entire device. You can also send to one of the printers in the office just a graph or an image of the data table. One of the most useful aspects of the LabQuest 2 is its ability to wirelessly send the information you're collecting to another device without installing any additional software on the device. You can access this two separate ways, either from the home menu, under the collections tab, or at any point by tapping the wireless signal on the bottom. In the bottom left corner, you'll notice a QR code and an IP address on any device, including iPhones, Androids, iPads, any laptop with a current browser. Just open the browser and enter the IP address and the browser will instantly take you to a modified version of the data collecting screen.